you're probably doing freeze frames in Final Cut Pro all wrong and it's wasting so much of your time. I'm gonna share six tips for creating pro level freeze frames in Final Cut that will save you so much time without being an editing expert. Be sure to watch the end when I show you how to make this cool clone effect. All right, to add a freeze frame in Final Cut Pro, move your playhead where you want to add that freeze frame. Let's go right here. Then go up to edit and down here to the bottom and select add freeze frame or even faster, just press option F. You'll notice it splits your clip into two pieces and then adds the freeze frame in between. So here's what that looks like. They're walking along then they freeze and then they move again. Freeze frames are great because you can move them around just like any other clip. You can also make them shorter by clicking and dragging on the beginning or the end to make a freeze frame. And just like a regular video clip, you can add effects to them or transitions and tweak them. Okay, if you don't want that freeze frame, you can undo it. You can also add a freeze frame from the browser. So I'm skimming over my clip here and I'll find the freeze frame I want to add. We'll say right here, I'll put my playhead there and then I'll press option F and you'll notice it adds the freeze frame as a connected clip on the timeline. And I can of course move that around and just like any other clip, I can change its duration like so. By default, a freeze frame is four seconds long. If I select my freeze frame, you can see right here that it's four seconds. Now, of course, I can change it by pressing Control D and entering a new value. We'll say two, zero, zero, enter for two seconds. But what if I want that freeze frame to always be two seconds? Press Command comma to open up preferences, click on the editing tab, and under here where it says still image, enter the new time value you want. Let's say two seconds. And I'll close this. And now when I add a freeze frame, with option F, you'll see that the freeze frame is just two seconds long. Freeze frames are great, but they do have some limitations. A hold segment is a lot better because it allows you to customize. One problem with freeze frames is the effects are baked in. So let's take this clip and just do something real drastic with it. Okay, we'll do some effect here. We'll add a lot of purple to it. Now, when I press option F to add that freeze frame, I select that freeze frame, and then I go to the inspector, you'll see I don't have that option to change the color. If I click here, it's the normal color board. Whereas the original clip, I can come here and I can tweak and change that. So you see there's a difference there. The effects are baked in and I can't update them. Another disadvantage is you can't quickly change where the freeze frame starts and ends. So here's my freeze frame. If I want that to start somewhere else, I have to undo or delete that freeze frame and then select a new spot and then press option F for the new freeze frame. Also with freeze frames, the speed changes are awkward. Check it out. My video is playing along and then it just freezes and then it moves back to the normal speed. We can avoid all of that with a hold frame. So skim to where you want the hold frame to start in your timeline and then Go up to Modify, Retime, and select Hold, or click on the Retime editor down here and select Hold, or even faster, press Shift H. Now my clip has been divided into three sections, normal speed, a freeze frame, and then the end normal speed as well. And here's what that looks like. Now if I add effects to this, let's do this color again. You'll see I have that color throughout the whole clip, including the hold frame, but now I can go and change and tweak that effect and it applies to the whole clip, including the freeze frame. Let's say now I have messed up and I don't want a freeze frame there. No problem. I'll double click on this little handle here and I'll select edit source frame. And now I can change where the hold starts. And you'll notice it makes the first clip longer, the regular speed clip longer, and it shortens the second one. All right, let's hold frame right there. And if I want to shorten or make my whole frame longer, all I have to do is click and drag on this end frame right here. And I can make it longer or shorter. If I double click on this handle, I can also add a speed transition. What that does is it adds a little bit of a transition so that it doesn't go from full speed to free speed immediately. It gradually changes the speed. I can do the same on the end here. This is doing the same thing if I click here and select smooth end transition, it will smooth our end transition. Now I can also tweak these transitions and I can make it more gradual over time by making it longer or more abrupt by making it shorter. And I can do the same thing on the end transition. I'm gonna make this shorter. All right, here's what that looks like. It's not as abrupt transition from normal to freeze frame. Check out this clip of my son's friend snowboarding. Isn't that insane? I can't believe he does that, that's crazy. So instead of adding a freeze frame to this, I want it to slow down and highlight his spinning and flipping. So I'm gonna activate the range tool by clicking here and selecting range, or just by pressing R and I'll get this special cursor. Then I'm gonna select the range that I want to slow down. 
So I wanna slow down right as he starts flipping. There we go. And then end here where he stops. Okay, then I'll click here on the read time editor and I can go to slow. Let's try 25% and you'll see it goes from fast or normal speed to slow. And we see him a little more detail. Man, that's amazing. And then it goes back to normal speed. But there's an even better way to do this. I'll undo that and this time I'm going to select automatic speed. What happens is it sets it to 40%. And that's because this video clip, I'll open up inspector by clicking this button and then click on the info inspector, you'll see this video clip was shot at 60 frames per second and this project is 24 frames per second. And so by selecting automatic, it slows down the video to automatically fit within the project settings. So here's how that looks. I think it's a little more smooth. It's not as slow, but it's more smooth looking and crisper. Now we have these speed transitions on here from before. I like to do is pull this first one into the middle and then the end speed transition to the middle as well. And let's pull this also to the left to make that transition more gradual. And then this one to the right. All right, let's 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 see how that looks. He comes in, we have a nice smooth transition and then a smooth transition out back to normal speed. Now I can change the start of this by double clicking right here and selecting edit source frame. Now I can move this along and say, you know what? I want it to be normal speed until he's upside down. All right, let's take a look at that now. Oh, smooth like butter. Hold up a second. Is this video good? Please let me know with a thumbs up. That way I know if I'm doing a good job and if I'm helping out. Thanks. In just a minute, I'm gonna show you that cool clone effect. But first I wanna show you how to export a freeze frame from your project. You can also export a freeze frame of your video. Go up to the share destination button in the upper right corner and click on add destination. Now drag and drop this save current frame over to the left hand side and change export to JPEG. Now close this and in your project, skim your playhead to where you want to export that freeze frame. We'll go right here and then click on the share destination button again and select save current frame. Go to settings and you can change that if you want here, but this looks good to me and then click next. Give your file a name, we'll call it freeze frame and select where you want to save it and click save. Now Final Cut will export that image. And here's my exported image. Another cool way you can use a hold segment is to add some echo to the end of your song. Here's my song and I want it to end here, but with some echo to add some emphasis. So I'll move my playhead to where I want it to end and with the clip selected, I'll press shift H to add a hold frame. And here's what that sounds like now. Oh, I did it too early. So I'll double click on this little button here and I'll edit the source frame and we'll move it here to the left. Okay, that looks good. Now we have that last hit in there. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna trim off the rest of the song down to the hold frame. And I'm gonna adjust how long I want this echo to be with the hold frame. We'll make it a little bit longer. There we go. And now I'll go to my effects browser by clicking this button here. We'll go down to audio, select spaces, and let's drag and drop cathedral onto our audio clip. Move the playhead to, to where the whole frame starts and go back one frame and then go to the audio inspector. If your inspector isn't open, click this button up here with the three sliders and then go to the audio inspector and down here under effects, cathedral, click the keyframe button, add a keyframe and put the amount to zero. Now back in the timeline, move forward one frame and increase the amount to 100. And then on your clip, hover over the bottom near the volume level until you get a left and right arrow and then click and drag to the left and this will add a fade out. All right, let's listen to that now. Oh, that's cool. What a great way to add energy at the end of an edit. All right, let's make this cool clone effect. Select your clip and then skim your playhead or your clip and find the spots where you want to add a clone. I wanna clone him here, so I'll press M to add a marker and move a little bit more. And I wanna clone him here as he crosses the sun and then right here before he leaves the screen. We'll press M again. So now I have these three markers. I'll move my playhead to the first marker and I'll option click on it to move my playhead and select the clip. Then I'll press Shift F and that's going to find the clip in the browser and it's going to find the exact frame that I'm on. You can see the playhead is right there on that frame. Now, all I have to do is press option F and it will connect a freeze frame at that marker. I'll do the same for the other two. I'll hold down option and I'll snap to my next marker and click on my clip, press shift F and then press option F to add the freeze frame. And one last time, option click, shift F and then option F. Now, I'll just click and drag on the end of these freeze frames to make them last the entire duration of the clip. And then I'll select my freeze frames and I'll go to the inspector and under blend mode, I'm going to change it to darken. All right, let's play back and see our clone effect. All right, here comes our guy, he's running. Oh, he's gonna leave a little spot there, nice. And another guy, 
and the last one as he runs off. This is such a cool effect. Keep in mind that this works best with high contrast videos or images. Notice that my runner is very dark and my background is very light. So you want something like that or a dark background and a light subject. I love that cloning effect. There's another effect I think you're gonna love, the rewind effect. I put together a video that shows you how to do a rewind effect in just two clicks. Check it out.